The threat of Islamic militants taking over Iraq's capital grows by the hour now. But for American contractors working in Iraq, that threat hits really close to home. Authorities are racing to evacuate them right now. Alexander Field joining us now from New York. So, um, Alexander, are there a lot of U.S. contractors still in Iraq that are now getting the signal that they need to get out? Uh, Fred, the estimate is that there are about 1,500 U.S. contractors working in Iraq, but the group of contractors that we've been focused on this week are those who are working at this military base in Balad. These are the people who have been evacuated the most swiftly. Companies that have contracts with the U.S. government have been moving their employees out of that area. One of those contractors who was in Balad, Tony, he spoke to Anderson Cooper. He talked about being rushed from Balad after it came under fire from ISIS. Here's what he described local national security forces, they pretty much just dropped their weapon and walked off base. But not the Iraqi army. The Iraqi army stayed, they fought, they did what they were actually supposed to do. But if it wasn't for the villages on our perimeter, you might not be talking to me right now, because the villages stood up and they helped out the Iraqi army tremendously. They can be very smart and they can be very fast and they can be very threatening. Back here at home, the families of these American contractors who are in Iraq obviously staying close to the news here, trying to make contact with their loved ones. We were able to speak to Tony's wife, who is in Texas. She talked about the very tense moments that she was experiencing as she waited for her husband to be evacuated from Balad. Here's what she said. I was saying, you know, I love you and just be safe. And like, you've, been, you've done the hero thing. Just come home. You know, you're a hero to us. Just come home, you know. They need a dad on Father's Day, like, be here. He had to get off, and I didn't hear from him the rest of the day. Normally, I'll hear from him, like, early in the morning and then late at night. And um, I didn't hear anything, so I was worried. Over the last couple of days, Fred, we've been talking to the family members of some of these contractors who are still in Iraq. A lot of them say that their loved ones have been doing these tours uh, of contract work for a number of years now, some as many as you know, nine years, even a decade. They say that this tour has now become as stressful, certainly, as any mm -hmm. they can remember, even in those early years. Yeah, I can't imagine. All right, thank you so much, Alexandra. Appreciate that. All right, hundreds of children crossing into the U.S. illegally every day, and most of them are from Central America. Some of them are all alone, no parents, no adults alongside them, and U.S. officials are struggling for a solution on how to care for them now.